Honorable President of India, today I am indeed honored to present a brief description of our training experience. Our training focuses on an all-round development. The focus is not only on academic training, but also on personality development. Sir, we have provided an optimal mixture of classroom training and field exposure. While we focus on law, accountancy and computers in the classrooms, we get an opportunity to apply these theoretical inputs when we visit various customs houses, central excise and service tax formations across India. We are indeed privileged to be imparted training by not only experts in the field of indirect taxation, but also by some of the senior most officers of our department. We also participate in organizing workshops and seminars which are held under the AGs of NASEN. For personal de development, sir, the probationers actively take part in various cultural, sports and social service activities. Through the Social Service Society, we regularly interact and associate with the school children of dwellings around our academy. Sir, the people of India expect their public servants to maintain utmost integrity. To this end, the academy has regularly conducted sessions on values and ethics. Sir, we are aware that the people of this country expect the best in governance from their public servants. I take this opportunity to assure you that with the training we have received, we will be able to work with honesty, integrity and dedication. We look forward to innovate in our field to provide people a, a, a people-friendly and hassle-free tax administration that puts people of India first. Sir, we now have six months before we get posted across India. We look forward to contributing to the economic growth of this country. Thank you. Jayan. Chairperson, Board of Central Excise and Customs, member of the CBC, senior officers of CBC, faculty members of National Academy of Customs and Central Excise, Faridabad, officers of the 63rd batch. First of all, I would like to welcome you to this historic building of old Vaisrigal Raj and now, now means of course from 26 January 1950, the abode of President of the Republic. I welcome you not only to Rashtrapati Bhavan but also to the services which you are entering into. When I speak before the revenue officers, sometimes I get little nostalgic because in my ministerial career, substantial part I spent in the department as Minister of State in charge first revenue and expenditure, later on revenue and banking, independent charge, and subsequently on two occasions I had the privilege of serving this country as cabinet ministers in charge of finance in the early 80s until I resigned from the Office of Finance Minister to contest the Office of the President. Therefore, when I look at the bright young faces, I feel assured that the future of this country, particularly one of the most important aspects of governance that is correction of revenue which is the lifeline of any government that is revenue collections the persons who are interested with are surely competent to deal with that. With these words, 
I would like to share some of my perception with you. One, the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, whom we describe as the architect of modern India, pointed out democracy and socialism are means to an end and not the end itself. It is means to the welfare of the people for which ideology and the institutional framework are meant for. Therefore, you shall have to always keep in your mind during your long tenure in the service that you are to serve the people of this country and through your services you are contributing to the building of this great nation. Our commitment and dedication towards social schemes and infrastructure, especially the rural infrastructures, require increased allocation of resources. Some part of these required resources can come through the private sector contributions. However, till today, a substantial part of it are coming through the government revenues. The last budget which I presented as the finance minister for the year 2012-13, the total expenditure proposal was little more than 12,000 crores of rupees. Receipts, of course, as you know, are always to be balanced to the pie, were also of the same amount in which substantial contribution came from the revenue both direct and indirect taxes to the extent of 8 lakh crores of rupees plus. Rest were, of course, borrowing and certain other non-tax receipts. Again, when my mind goes back to the first revenue budget presented in independent India, as the country became independent on the 15th August 1947 and as per the practice financial year was over on 31st March 1947 therefore the budget with which both the governments, Government of India and Government of Pakistan had to deal with for the year 2000, for the year 1947-48 were the old budget presented by the then finance minister. In those days it was called finance member, Liaquat Ali, who later on became the prime minister of Pakistan on 14th August, the day of the creation of Pakistan. Thereafter it was decided by the government of India. I am narrating this story to you only to come to your own conclusion what enormous changes in the fiscal and revenue scenario has taken place in this country over these years. It was decided that independent of India, independent India must have its own first budget. Shanmukham Chetty, who was the first finance minister of India, presented the budget in the middle of November 1947 which is normally known as the winter session of parliament. And you will be surprised to know the amount of indirect taxes to the government of India was. There was no excise duty. There was no surface tax. Only one indirect tax was there, customs duty, 
and the total customs duty levied for the year 47-48 in independent India was 50 crore, 50 lakhs. 